Finance Committee meeting for the City of Hudson to order on August Hello. 21st. Hi. Oh. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, they, Hold on just, one second, Rachel. Yeah, we're just calling the meeting to order, Rachel. So under new business, we uh, approval of the minutes from our August 7th meetings. Move to approve. Second. Any corrections or revisions? No. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 2.2, .2, claims in the amount of $1,154,403.26. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Give her a chance to set up and the mayor to come to seat. Yeah. Let's see. Rachel, are you ready? Am I not? Sorry about that. Rachel, can Rachel, you hear me? Can you hear me? Oops, that's no, not right. Hello, yes, I can. Aaron, is that you? Can you hear me now? Hello. Why is this always a problem? Okay, okay. Rachel, can Rachel, you hear me, can you hear me now? now? I can. Okay, hold on, okay, one hold second. on one second. I need something else. Okay. Yes. We're on 2.3, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Rachel, can you hear me now? Nope. Nate, can you open the door? Okay, Rachel, can you hear us now? Rachel? Oh my God. She's definitely getting the sound. She's there, she's muted. She is muted. But, but, but now can you, now hear, can me, you hear me, Rachel? Okay, okay go ahead, go get, ahead started. get started. I don't know why it's doing this. Oops. Well, thank you everyone who's here. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Why oh, the so host disabled my screen sharing. Can someone help me? <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. It's coming through my computer, not the system. I just turned the speakers down so it wouldn't echo. Try turning the speakers back up, Nate, would you? Thank you. There it is. Awesome. Um, can I hear okay if you can see my screen? Uh, not yet. We can hear you. Can you see my screen? Nope, not nope, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let's see. What's going on here, buddy? Hmm. Now we can. Now we can. Perfect. All right. Well, I'd like to first thank everyone for their time. Um, I'm from Flaherty and Hood. Here we're going to discuss the City of Hudson's market review, compensation system, wage schedule, and study uh, just to pretty much give you an update okay. what we've been doing and why you're here today. So my screen and let me go. This is a team that's been working to get this study um, going for Hudson. So Brandon is our attorney uh, shareholder. I am the HR project manager for this project. 
And Ethan is our data analyst, market analyst. He basically assisted with the creation of the market base page structure that we're going to review today. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about us. Uh, so we've been providing legal, analytical, public affairs services for the last 30 years. Some of those practices does include like job classification, compensation, organizational structure. Um, why we're here today is pretty much for like a market uh, base page structure uh, organization. Uh, we've done labor and employment law. And then of course, I'm HR, so we do human resources. Uh, we perform classification compensation services for numerous um, public entities. So public agencies, city agencies, um, population serving between a thousand to over 200, 200,000, almost 300,000, uh, typically primarily cities. Uh, that's why it was very, it, it, it made it somewhat easy for us to assist Aaron as far as getting this uh, study done. Uh, we understand public sectors, compensation, um, different organization, public financing, city, village, uh, unionized environments, just to give you an idea of our background. Um, and what we did, why we conducted the study, we needed something that would be customized to Hudson itself, tailored to your city's circumstances. Um, this is very high priority. So the timing of the study discussed early, we try to get the deadlines to have, well, pretty much we're here today to get this going and discuss with you council as far as, you know, what the next step would be as far as the study. Uh, we do do comprehensive. So what we did is, or what we've done is develop analysis to identify comparable entities. Aaron assisted us with that. We will touch down further on as far as what those entities are. Um, we provide advices and represent cities to ensure compliance and implementing these studies, um, even with unionized, non-unionized um, environments. Um, so comprehensible, uh, we have a proven record of communicating on our complex legal HR, job classification, compensation issues. Uh, typically our clients understand if they have questions, they reach out. Uh, we do provide user-friendly electronics, um, meaning like guides, uh, city reviews, maintain and update job analysis. So just pretty much just staying up to date as far as the market and what truly reflects the city of Hudson. And then overall, our most important goal is always cost effective. So we provide significant reduced public rates with high quality service. So once again, why are we conducting this study? Well, the city of Hudson is pretty much committed to establishing and administering a classification compensation for cities like the city of Hudson mainly to our overall goal, attract, retain, and keep the employees, well-qualified employees that we have currently. Uh, what the goal is, we're here to encourage, improve performance, motivate employees to develop their capabilities and competencies. Uh, we enhance employees' engagement in the city of Hudson through commitment, your work effort, and desire to stay with the city. And that's why we're here, because we're looking for ways to get our employees to um, understand that we're on their side and we're trying to work with them as far as creating a structure that would be effective for them. We also provide sufficient flexibility to accommodate changing physical eco uh, economies as, as far as like the next year when it starts along with the marketplace and then internal equity conditions. So making sure that, you know, we're internally compliant with the city of Hudson. So um, what this study actually included mainly was the market comparison. So what happened? This is pretty much why we're here. This is what we're trying to figure out. We established comparable city, cities based on statistical analysis. And then of course, like Aaron's input as far as what would be compatible uh, for the city of Hudson. Then we compile, review and analyze all that data internally and externally. And then we provided and discussed external comparison data with Aaron um, to make sure that everything that we collected and we're presenting to you um, makes sense, of course, but um, works for the city of Hudson. Okay. 
Um, and then implementation, which you guys will go into a little bit more further down, but this is how the process works. So based on statistical analysis of the market and your job ratings itself, um, we do the implementation, which includes proposed modification to your base pay structure. And that's what I will show you next, along with a plan for applying to current employees and just, you know, retaining those good employees that have been with us for so long. All right. So just to tell you a little bit more for starters, this study itself is the market review of compensation system wage schedule study for the city of Hudson. And the process pretty much went, we were reviewed all the information that um, the city of Hudson provided us, Aaron, along with reviewing all of the market survey, which took some time gathering and researching. We'll touch on that a little bit more in order for us to create what is now your proposed base pay structure. And then like, you know, allowing you ideas as far as implementation and what the next step would be and how efficient it would be for the city of Hudson. So reviewing the information, um, f &H performed a very detailed review of your city's classification and compensation through the market review compensation system, wage system, excuse me, schedule. Um, we reviewed 100 plus full-time employees looking at 51 plus positions, job classification itself, okay? And so the next stage of this study was the phase B, which is actually the market survey itself. So phase A was actually doing the research and gathering the data. And then phase B was actually beginning to put everything together. So what we did was a cluster analysis, uh, reviewing common factors, geography and population closely matching the city of Hudson. So it's not random locations. And based on FNH's statistical analysis, um, well, it, Minnesota and Wisconsin, the cities are, that were identified as comparable to the city of Hudson. Um, we have Greendale, Hugo, Little Canada, Mendota Heights, North St. Paul. Please excuse me, I may butcher a couple of names, like <laughs> especially the middle two, the O and the P. Red Wing, <laughs> River Falls, Robbinsdale, South St. Paul, Stillwater, Van Nuys Heights, Verona, and West St. Paul. So these are all comparables that match closely to the city of Hudson itself, utilizing both Wisconsin and Minnesota to create these closely matched comparables to the positions we're going to look at next. Okay. So continuing on for phase B of the market survey, uh, we compile, review, and analyze all the market data collected from all of those comparables that we received data information from, okay? Uh, keeping in mind, there was a lot of uh, different ways of communicating and making sure all this data was up to date and accurate. Um, utilizing Aaron in the best ways to make sure that everything matches up as far as positions to comparable entities that you just saw on the last page. Um, Aaron assisted with benchmark classifications um, that were established using the parameters of those specific uh, comparables. We made sure that they were easily defined and found in other organizations um, for comparison. And this is based on the job classifications I'm talking about specifically. Um, we made sure that there are representatives of all levels and spreads from top, top to bottom across all functions. And then we made sure that it represents the city's internal hierarchy and are spread out through throughout all departments. So um, we basically made sure that the comparables we were looking at, the entities we're looking at, match our city of Hudson's internal hierarchy as far as like job descriptions, how much they pay and what they do on a day to day position. So they're unique characteristic for their jobs. And so this is where we are. This is actually uh, a good, a very good insight as far as comparing all the comparables that we saw, oh, excuse me, on the slide that showed all the cities, both Wisconsin and Minnesota, this is our combined aggregate of everything and where the city of Hudson stand. And where you stand is very good, especially within the market. 
So um, typically what we initially like to look at is, if you can see my mouse, there's a mid, and this is where you are, the medium, the mid of the mean, okay? Which is very good, because overall when we do 100%, you're at the mid, which makes you very marketable. Um, you're very good at your max, and you're very good at your minimum. So that's just an idea, so you have a visual of all the comparables that I showed you a couple slides prior of where the city of Hudson stands currently. Okay. And then just to give you like another review, when it looks at your current minimum wage, you're also doing very good. Um, keep in mind, it says total market sample size of positions, there are 51, but we were only able to utilize 39. Now what that means is um, we only compare positions uh, that are, are, are comparables that allow us three or more uh, comparable data. Okay, so if there is a position, I can't think of one just randomly out of my mind, maybe a pilot. City of Hudson has a pilot. Um, if there's only one city that has a pilot, we will not be able to use that as a comparable. So that's why you see that there are 39. So very good data, okay? And then here's your current maximum wage. Still very, very good data. You guys are very good as far as your min, max, and your mid for the city of Hudson. So um, once again, there was 51 uh, sample size, but we were only able to utilize 43 sample size when it comes to your maximum wage, okay? So then we go to C, and this is why we're here, the proposed base pay structure. So the proposed base pay structure for the city of Hudson, well, obviously we looked at it, it's a new pay structure. Um, it's based on taking the mean of the highest pay for each position, based on the comparable entities that you saw a few slides prior, then using that market as the new highest pay for each position. And then what we concluded would be effective uh, would be proposed of 51 grades, 51 grades, excuse me, and you'll see the proposed structure after, 3% differential between each pay grade, and there are six steps, okay, including the initial step, okay? So the start step at minimum um, of the range is about 90%. And then the step differential between the six steps are between 2.22% to 2.04% for each step until you reach step six, which is very good, very good. So this is what an idea of your proposed base pay structure looks like. Um, excuse me, there are two pages, but this just gives you an idea of um, all the positions itself for the city of Hudson and where they stand as far as step one all the way to step six. So the proposed base pay structure. Um, at any time, if you have questions, let me know, cut in, that's fine. So this is page one and here's page two, continuation. Okay. So now the base pay structure is pretty much based on the results of the study, the city of Hudson's management feedback, which was Aaron mainly, and any additional factors, proposed update structures that was developed. And I believe Aaron explained a little bit more in detail in the email that he sent to you last week, okay? But the proposed base structure itself is very good because it's inter internally equitable. I can't speak today, excuse me. Legally compliant, um, it's very competitive, very competitive, and it's affordable, okay? And I mean, we're always looking for those main things. So um, moving forward, then there's the implementation, which you guys will discuss a little bit more further with Aaron, but city staff will determine the proper placement of each employee on the new pay scale, proposed pay scale, and then ensure equitable increases for all employees. As you guys progress, employees will move to their new pay plan when they are eligible for a pay increase on their anniversary date in 2024, okay? And then, um, I mean, finally, I know this was really, I don't know if this was quick or short, but thank you, City of Hudson. I appreciate your time. 
You there, Aaron? <laughs> I am. I don't know if you can hear me, though. Hmm. Okay, sorry. We have weird we have microphones, weird microphones going, on. going on. Um, yep, um, yep. I'll let you know, let if, you know, you know if you have any questions. Welcome. <laughs> so, um, I don't have to share my screen anymore, but I mean, this was, this is it. Um, just let me know. I mean, pretty much the next step for you guys is to discuss the proposed base pay structure. And I mean, let us know how you feel and then begin implementing this um, it's, it's on your next payroll scale. It should not show okay. yours. They can't hear me then. Really? Yep. Okay, Rachel, okay, give, Rachel us give us one sec. We'll, sec. we'll let you know. Let I got to keep, keep muting because we're, we're having a weird feedback. Weird feedback. I wonder if it's me. Hmm. I don't know why it's that way. Um, okay, so basically, um, you, uh, I did provide a little more information in the email, but I think the basic response is that uh, we uh, we looked at um, all the results. We took the mean and set the mean as our highest, so it puts us basically right in the middle. Um, if you look back on some of those slides, uh, you know, basically our lower level pay were fairly decent in the lower level ranges of the pay, um, and then when you get to the upper, is where you see that we're. Um, uh, you know, I guess a little bit more behind. They're uh, still there, Aaron. If if there are no other questions, then um, I'll let Rachel I'll go. Is that okay? Have, I'll reach out to you tomorrow, Aaron. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. I got to unmute. I can't get to my Zoom for some reason. Oh my God, I don't know what is happening with the Zoom tonight. Hold on, Rachel. Hold on. Wait. Hold on one hold second. On one second. Okay. Does anybody have, does anybody have any questions for Rachel while she's on? Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh my God. I do. I do. I think it's over. Okay. okay. Rachel, can Rachel, you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. So, so what we've seen, I've been involved, I've been involved in, in some, some uh, salary sal comparison studies in the past. And uh, one thing that Hello? I'm not seeing here, and I'm sure you weren't asked to asked do this, to do this but, but I'm, I'm very curious, curious about, about it. Is, is, where do we where stand, do we stand in, 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 in comparison, comparison to comparable, comparable positions, positions in the private, private sector? Oh, you stand very good. The city of Hudson is doing great when it comes to the market. I mean, if you go back to, oh, uh, let me see if I can so what, I'm, what I'm seeing here is just comparisons in, in public sector, public sector government, government employees. Right, I apologize. Right. Please say that again. There's feedback. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I apologize I'm apologizing for that. that. What, I'm, what seeing I'm seeing here, here is a study, is a study that's, that's just, just comparing, comparing government, government, employees, government, to government, government employees to government employees. employees. And, and in studies, in studies that, I've that I've worked with in the past, the past we've done we've comparisons done with government, with government employees, employees to comparable, comparable positions, positions in the private, in the private sector. sector. Right. And I think right. the, answer, think the for answer for us, we did not we did do not comparison. comparison. We, just did we just did public sector, public sector employees. employees. We did not, we did not use any private sector ones. ones. Right. I have a I question. Have a question. Also, also, was there, was any, there comparison any comparison done, done with, with the benefit, benefit package, package that the city, that the city of Hudson of offers, offers as, opposed as opposed to the to other municipalities? municipalities? How do we compare, we compare that, way? that way? So the main focus when we did this comparison was based on just the market um, as far as like wages for um, comparable entities. So we mainly just focus on like compensation and market. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else? I want, to be honest, a lot of them didn't even answer half of those questions that we asked them for. Uh, we called, we emailed, we researched, we we did a lot, okay, reaching out. And I mean, Hudson is busy and we understand and they're busy too. Um, but we did, we did the best that we can as far as reaching out. It, it took us a few months, I mean, Aaron knows, to even get all this data and collect it and put it together for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I think that's, I think it, that's it, it for the questions, questions, Rachel. Okay. Well, feel free to ask any other questions that you have. Let Aaron know. Aaron is so good. He knows so much. So ask away if he doesn't know, we have the answers too. We work hand in hand with Aaron 
and he's been a very good support as far as getting this study together and going. So thank you, Aaron, for your time. Truly appreciate you. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, have a good one, everyone. Thanks Enjoy. Thanks, Rachel. Mm-hmm. Bye. I apologize. I don't know. The Zoom worked last time. You got me. Um, okay, so basically what we're looking at is when we looked, you know, as the summary, like if you look at our um, the minimum, like our starting, um, we are about 5.85% below the um, average for, um, for the comparables for the starting pay. And then... Um, if you go to the max pay, we're about 17.2, where we are 17.22% below the average for the max pay. Um, and so, you know, that gives you an idea that, you know, on the low end, we're, we're not too bad. On the high end, we're, you know, we're, we're fairly, we're fairly well below. And that's mean, not median? or Right. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So what we did is we took the mean, uh, we made that the, the start, and that's, you know, basically where we, where we, put the scale into place as an option to to take a look at so um so two questions uh, i was curious that new richmond wasn't in our comp set mm -hmm. and some of these other baldwin. folks yeah well, i mean do you, i don't think we really compare with baldwin um uh, new richmond we've um, often used them on quite a few of our yeah I, I guess i don't think baldwin's a good comparable new richmond i could see as, as potentially richmond, we, we, baldwin, we might yeah. we, we might look at but you know honestly i think most of our competition we focused at where we're getting employees from which is the metro side um so across the rivers where we get most but we did want to throw in some of the other ones that i think are are good comparables um on this side so and if verona wisconsin is that verona and economy walk and mm -hmm. Those seem awfully far away for comparables. But there's not much around here other than when you talk about River Falls as, yeah. as, a, as a good comparable, and, and we know what they can look like. Um, so we tried to look at, when they looked at it, they looked at comparable size cities with comparable size budgets, comparable departments, things like that. So when they when they did their list, that's how they came up with them. Because okay. they wanted to get a general idea of fairly comparable locations. And not trying to jump ahead, but on the proposed 2024 base pay structure, mm -hmm. is our next discussion based on putting everybody in step one? No. So basically, you'll have some employees that are already above step one right now. Okay. So what we would do is what we're going to take a look at the employees and figure out, so they make this amount now, what makes sense for them to go to the next Onto the onto the new scale, um, you know, because you had to figure they were already if they're still getting steps, they were already going to get a step, which on our old scale is anywhere from two to three something percent roughly. Um, so they were going to get that step. We would have done some sort of cost of living adjustment as well. So we take that into account. We try to figure out where would they have went. So they they see an increase that makes sense. So we we're basically it's individual for each employee on where they would get put on the scale based on longevity. Yep, based on where they're at in the current system, things like that, what they currently make. Um, and then from there, it um, what we're seeing with a lot of them is that a lot of employees that were either at the top or close to the top will now go lower. So they'll have more room for future years for steps and things like that. We're seeing that with a number of the employees well, that they, they gave those second, steps. You said employees will go lower? Well, they, because- There's more steps. They'll go lower steps. Let's say they're on step five right now of six. So you won't change their salary. You can't. No, we're not taking, what I'm saying is that they go a lower step. So they get a pay raise, but instead of being on step six at the top of the scale, they'll get a pay raise and be on step three of the okay. new scale. So it does give, so th this does give us more room too that we won't be talking about this hopefully for five years. Well, I like the fact that having more steps is an incentive for people to stay. Yeah. Right now, it seems to me how many, what is, they can get a step each year for a maximum of five steps up from where we are right now? Basically from start, so about six So after six you've steps. been here five years, mm -hmm. unless you get a different job description, right. different training, or the cost of living raises, there's not really, you know, to see it as a career potential. I, I do like that, That, and I, I understand what your question was, Randy, about that it might seem like I'm not at the top step now, but actually they'll probably be getting a raise, plus have the potential if for we adopt steps. this. So, yeah. so for example, a senior, a senior uh, employee, 
mm -hmm. is going to drop in where based on it, so it just does depend on the position because i mean if you look at let's go i would do we have a technology director we don't anymore because we really do need one so let's, <laughs> <laughs> for the I zoom a personal assistant <laughs> so so when you look like just so I, I for say, example yeah I'll, I'll give an example so let's see Trying to see which one would be the best one I can look at here. I sent so many documents, um, so it's gonna it's gonna kind of depend. So let's see. That's not gonna be the right one. I'm gonna do this one. Market wage. There it is. So when you look at that market da wage data workbook with all the tabs that show the the actual salaries from all the different places, um, things like that. Let me get to the right. Come on. Uh, let's see. Max. Um, man, there we go. So, just say, f for example, um, what page are you on? Uh, so, if you're on that the spreadsheet that says uh, City of Hudson Market Wage Data Workbook, it's that tab that says 2023 Market Sum Max and Wage. That was the one I was trying to say probably is the best summary of things. So. What it'll tell you, if you start scrolling down, you'll see the percentage that the current position is under the mean of the uh, of the comparables. So, for example, our accountant position, just because it's the very top one, is 22% below what the the mean is. So, obviously, that one's going to see a, a you know a little bit of a bigger placement overall on the scale, which means that they're basically going to probably go to start one because they're. Top end of their scale is going up twenty two percent. Which page are you on? Excuse me. Uh, uh, so it's of the whole packet. There's ninety nine yeah, pages. You, it, oh no, that's, it, it's it, actually that Excel I emailed out. Oh god, sorry. Could, could you yeah. go down the bottom and tell us how many tabs over we have to go? Because yeah. it doesn't show the full name of each out. of the tabs. So it starts with key, and yep. then it says survey positions. Mm -hmm. So after that, it's the raw twenty twenty three raw max twenty twenty three raw mid minimum. Skip those. Then it says 2023 market sum max hourly. Go to the next one. It says 2023 market sum max and wage. So it's like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh tab over. And then. Thanks. So then, for example, the. Um, the next position below it, the account HR coordinator, it's only 5.19% below the max. So that one, the max is gonna go up basically 5% roughly. So then they're gonna get placed pretty close to where they would went in the scale probably anyways, for the most part. So it really does just depend on the position because some positions are way more below the, the median or the mean than others are. So is it your intention to go to 0% and then start? basically over so if they're a negative five from the median we're going to basically we're going to what we did was everybody is different places on the pay scale right. you know, depending on where they're at so let's just say for example that somebody was on step three of their pay scale and let's assume that the council is going to let's say four percent cost of living for next year we just pick a number so their step between that three and that and that would have been 2.5 something percent and maybe 2.6 i don't know for sure um but let's say two and a half percent then plus the um uh cost of living would have been like six and a half or whatever so when we look at what that would have been we then look at the new scale and say where does it make sense to put them kind of around there um it won't fit exactly but we want to make sure they wouldn't get less than what they would have gotten if we wouldn't implement the new pay scale okay that's what our goal is and this would be for 2024 it would be for 2024 and currently in 2023 all city staff got a four percent cost of living they did increase already okay yep thank you yep so this would just go into none of this goes into effect till 2024 and also it doesn't go into effect our policy is on your anniversary date so not all of this goes in january 1. it gets staggered out throughout the year okay. um, now if we've had employees that um we've done some different things to they're Sometimes there, we do have some that are January one mm -hmm. rates. It just makes it easier. Like for mine, because you guys do my review at the end of the year, we just do January one. Even though my anniversary date's in September, we wait and we do my raise January one. It's just whatever. It's cleaner. It, yeah. So, but for the most part, you'll have employees that will maybe see their move to the new scale um, 
January, February, March, April. Some may not do it until September, October, November, because that's when their anniversary is. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we based off the anniversary. Now, what they do get immediately the first part of the year is a cost of living adjustment. I was just going to ask that. <laughs> so what we've proposed in this is that 4% cost of living adjustment. So everybody gets that. That's all factored into the, all these pay scales that you see in there. That's all factored into there already. That 4% is factored into that. So I just mentioned the one for 2023, but you're saying This for is for the next year. So every year we do the cost of living adjustment. Okay. So basically what happens is, is January 1, everybody's scale adjusts up by the cost of living adjustment, which we're proposing for next year is at 4%. And then if we adopt this new pay scale, whenever their anniversary date is, they'll drop into that new spot in the, that, that pay scale. Like I said, it could be January, February, March, April, whenever. Just depends on when they got hired, basically. So did... You probably answered this, but I missed it. Did the study include the 4% cost of living increase? That's what that the they show on there, the yes. The proposed. Yep, 4%. that's what they show in there. That, that's included in there. So what they show in there includes that. And so, you know, and the thought is, is that you did the study in basically 2023, early 2023, we started it. So all of these cities that we're talking to are going to do some sort of cost of living adjustment in 2024, assumedly. Um, so this keeps this helps to keep track so we don't fall further behind with it. But those numbers that you see in that PowerPoint presentation and everything that was sent, that includes that 4%. Okay. That's already factored into it. So are there any employees that have some longevity in their, so, you know, they're up on, uh, mm -hmm. they're on this, this, the, the top scale. Yep. But in the current <laughs> yep. plan. We only have but four. But they've, they've got some, but they've got... But on the new plan, they're way at the bottom. Right. So our longevity pay is nothing. I mean, it doesn't okay. add up to hardly anything. <laughs> I mean, it's, I can't remember what it is. It's, it's not enough to make it worthwhile. They get way more money by moving lower in the scale and having growth. So there won't, there should not be any complaints for anybody losing any sort of longevity pay. Even if they've been here 20 plus years, they're still better moving on to the scale. Could you explain that? I wasn't familiar with. We've got a thing where if you hit the back of your scale, I can't remember what the longevity, does anybody? It's 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 a very minor amount. Okay. I mean, Just I want to say like being a long-term employee, they get a bonus. But it's a li it's That's very not. very little. Like it's most employees don't even notice it because it's such a minor amount. And that will go away. Is that, that just basically Joyce goes was, away now. Thank you. Because yeah, we, we move on to this. Okay. Um, so nobody's going to worry about losing that. They all do much better by moving on to the scale. And we do have. We I did mention we have four employees that the studies showed that they were already our pay scales were either right at or above the mean, so they just stay on their current pay scale. We're not gonna give them a pay cut, but we just keep the current pay scale the way it is. So they won't change. And there are all those employees are already at the, basically the top of their scales too, so. And then could I ask you about the benefit package? I yep. know you have worked in yep. Minnesota I think quite it's, a bit. I think it's, it's, it's pretty comparable. I mean, we, when we look at, especially like when we do our union negotiations, which do match up with our city ones, we get all the comparables from, you know, because okay. that part's always part yeah. of the negotiating. So I feel like we're, we're pretty much right on with, with, um, with all of that. Okay. I mean, I think it's a very good benefit package, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Uh, but I think we're, we're probably very comparable with. with okay. Thank you. Anything else? Aaron, anything yeah, else? I don't think we need anything more from the finance committee other than let's go talk, talk about the budget because this is where this really impacts. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all theoretical if you talk about that. Um, okay, so then moving on to the budget. Uh, so I, I sent uh, the, 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 the council finance committee kind of a a summary just to sort of explain it the best I can, since obviously this is a very complicated budget here. Um, with the addition of taking on the full library levy, um, while we do obviously see an increase in our levy limit to be able to, to, to do that, um, you know, we are talking about uh, you know, a $380,000 addition to our levy. Now, as I talk about in here, we'll get to that in a little bit about what the actual levy impact of that is. Um, but that, you know, is the reality that um, that's, you know, almost a 4%, um, 4% uh, levy increase alone just for the, just for the library part. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of get to that. So I, I did split the budget um, kind of up into, into three pieces. Um, the first, obviously, is the debt levy. We knew about this one. 
We approved a capital improvement plan um, earlier in the year. Um, we, we did bonding for all the projects for the, the two-year portion of that. So for 2023 and 2024, we have bonded for all the projects except for the new public works facility um, that we're, we're waiting on until we actually have we're farther in the process. So we've already budgeted for those. Remember the big part of that is that we did begin the process this year and next year of increasing our funding to our street maintenance. So we knew that we were going to be seeing an increase um, in that debt levy. Um, and so uh, when, you, when you take a look at that, uh, um, you'll see that uh, the, the debt levy goes up um, actually about, uh, or is it 16, 16.7%. Uh, um, but of a, as a part of our overall levy, that's about 4% of our overall levy. So when you look at our overall levy increase, 4% um, uh, of that is increase in debt levy. Um, so we knew about that. We knew that was coming, but now we're actually seeing how it impacts the, the actual overall levy itself. The next part is... Can I, can I interrupt there for a second? And again, maybe you answered this. I'm, I'm just trying to digest numbers yep. here. Um, the actual capacity increase from capacity that we receive from our municipal partners yep. left is how much? $380,000. No, I knew that, but oh. percentage-wise? Oh, well, so pretty much every $100,000 is about 1% with our budget, roughly. Okay. So about 3.8%. Okay. And then also should be noted that with the levy limits, um, we do see increases based on um, uh, our net new construction. And so this year we did have 3.45% uh, in net new, new construction, which is actually a very good number. Last year we had about 2%. Um, so it's we're we're almost double from last. Certainly year. helping offset the yep. average percentage yep. job. Yeah. Yep, that that definitely plays into that. What the actual mill? Do you anticipate is. that being really close to that, or up? Maybe we we, we think so. We're only waiting for really a couple numbers to get finalized from the state uh, on on equalized values, which will happen in October, and then we'll know for sure. But last year, our net new constructions was two percent, and basically it was a two percent reduction in our mill rate based on what our actual levy was. So we think it should track pretty close to that. Okay. So we'll know for sure um, by October. I don't think it'll be more than a percentage difference. So let's say worst case, you know, we would have a 7.3% impact on the mill rate um, instead of six. But we'll find out for sure by October and then we can update this obviously well before we adopt the final budget. Um, okay, so anyways, back to the operations levy. Um, the operations levy is increasing that 200, basically $286,000 or 3.6% um, of the in, in, it's increasing for operations. now. Let's note with that, um, that we got $367,000 more in state shared revenue. So if we did not get that $367,000 in new state shared revenue, that operations levy would be going up by that amount. So you know, then you're talking about the operations levy going up 8% alone, somewhere in there, not talking about the library, but just the operation side, not counting library. Um, if we did not have that new state shared revenue of three hundred sixty-seven thousand um, dollars, you know, you'd be looking at you know a seven per plus percent increase in operation levy. So that state shared revenue is going a long way towards what we just talked about that salary study. Now there's some strings tied with that new state shared revenue, um, but uh, you know, use it for public safety, public works, things like that. It doesn't have to be for salary. That's what I'm proposing this with the salary study is that it goes that way um, because honestly with the police, because public safety and public works are our two largest budgets by far and a good portion of those two budgets are our personnel. So, you know, it, it, it just goes to, 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 to recognize that if we increase their pay, we're, that's, that's the biggest chunk of our budget. So that's where, as of right now, I'm recommending we put that, that increase in state share revenue. So, so did we, last I, last I remember, we had, we had discussions about whether this increase in revenue sharing was going to be an ongoing increase. I thought it was just a one time. So it's ongoing. Every year we'll get more. It's it's tied to the sales tax. Okay. And then we actually have a guaranteed increase for 2024. So we already know that we're going to get more than we got. I'm sorry. What we get in 2024, we know that the following year, 2025 budget, we're going to get more. They've already locked us in for those two years and it's set up in the act that this will be an ongoing forever thing that we'll get this revenue. It's not a one time. It's not, you know, things like that. It's, it's, unless something changes, as we all know, the legislature <laughs> can change things. But I think in this case, um, I think everybody's pretty much assuming that this is an ongoing expenditure or ongoing new revenue source for us. Okay, and then to back up a second with new construction, um, what's on the horizon? 
Well, I mean, or, we, I mean, that's we, we, we still anticipate another strong construction year next year. We assume that we'll see um, another phase of a couple apartment projects coming in. Um, this is not taking into account any potentially controversial projects. Um, you know, we'll, we'll <coughs> see. Um, I think uh, obviously the ballpark and lift bridge are still moving forward. They've had their delays, but they're still giving us full assurances that they're moving forward. So we should see those projects. Um, so I don't think that we'll see a large drop, but I think we all have to know that at some point we will be built out and you know we can only do so much with redevelopment sort of projects and we probably will see some of that net new construction start to drop. But like I said, 2%, I thought we had a really good construction season last year and we're at you know 3.65, I believe it is this year. So um, we're, we're continuing to see strong net new construction growth, 3.45. And debt service, I know that we're retiring some, but yep. so a net. Um, we're still going to be seeing increases. I think if you remember from the, the CIP, with especially with the increase in street funding, we go up until the end of the CIP. And that's when we start to see that drop off. Right. Now that going up is mediated <clears throat> some because we are definitely adding a lot of new revenue for the streets. And we're taking, with that CIP, we assume a new public works facility, a new police facility too. Um, but we do have that um, mitigated somewhat by some of that debt dropping off. So we do have some debt rolling off still that helps with that increase. So and we're looking at what, two and five years on the public works and public safety? Yes. Could I ask a question about the debt levy? Uh, thank you for all the work, first of all. It's <laughs> monumental and thank you for getting it to us early this year so we can talk about it uh, together because there's a lot of key issues. I was noticing, uh, so first of all, you provided a document to us that came from Ellers. Mm -hmm. It was your email uh, August 16th, and I think the date that they provided it was sometime in June here. It was in my fine print. At any rate, I saw a different number. So you've got proposed yep. for 24 so budget, there, there is, $2,700,000, and they had 2340000 So what's the difference? I wish it would have been what they had proposed initially. So they missed... Uh, they had uh, initially missed and they had assumed that there was more of the debt was going to be spread out among um, some of the utilities things because we do spread our debt around a little bit, okay. but that was not accurate. We, we were making sure we do our debt right. So the current number in here is about $30,000 more than what they estimated, and that is the right number. So the 390, 744 is what we have in the levy for debt. And I think they, they had proposed 360, I think. If I'm not mistaken, so yes, they were because, off. Well, they had their yep. They were off by thirty thousand dollars, and that line. was Ellers admitted they made a mistake. They didn't pull the right number through. Okay. So we do have the correct number in I here because trust about me, that. Okay. anytime something goes up, I want to make sure it can go back down because that would All just right. have saved us 0.3 percent. Yes, I was levy. thinking that that would have brought uh, would have our nice. increase down. We're looking at a tax yep. increase. It would it would have been nice to be able to save uh, that extra significant tax increase, yep. so, uh, despite. So unfortunately, that is the correct number. Is the three okay, nine? They were off in that initial. Wondering about that. All right. Yep. Thanks for explaining it. Um, okay, so then. Got a question. Oh, sorry. How close will we be to our um, levy limits? Um, we should still be pretty much fine um, because we get to add that 3.45%, yep. which is um, our net new construction. And then even last year, uh, where was I? Let me find it. Last year, we still had I got a lot of files. Um, I can tell you for sure. So last year we had an, an additional about 255,000 in room in our, so about 2.5% room last year, mm -hmm. um, in our levy limits still that we, we, we were not up to yet. And like I said, this year, um, obviously we have more expenditures going up, but we will see that overall limit besides the library go up that net new construction to 3.45 percent so we will we will still be and i won't i'll i'll have sean ellers run the new number of where we're going to be at mm -hmm. um in relation to that um, but we still should have i would assume that two to three percent room still that we that we could look at you know 200 to 300 thousand dollars more in levy if we needed to okay and then what's the rule of thumb as far as if we increase the taxes, what does that do to the mill rate? Is there a? <laughs> it's it's pretty much you know it's, the levy is a pretty much one to one 
except for value growth. So like I said, it, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of other factors in there too because it's confusing with we have equalized value versus assessed value and our ratios and things like that. Um, but it's pretty close to one-to-one -one really. I mean, so you know, what we're saying is, is that our levy is going up uh, you know, nine, well, we don't count, let's all remember, we don't count the TID levy when we do any of this because those two things balance each other out. It shows up in here, but they should be basically negativing each other out, not affecting uh, the mill rate necessarily. Um, so anyways, um, so with all that, um, as we talk about, um, we're looking at basically a 9.4% levy increase but we're assuming with our value growth, net new construction, that the actual impact is at 6.3% mm -hmm. on, on taxes going up. Uh, again, we have to wait till we get the final equalized values from the state in October, and then we'll know that number for sure. Um, but you know, I like to kind of say, just assume that it's pretty close to whatever you levy in percentage increase is what's gonna affect people. Um, and now, of course, just remember your house value. If your value has gone up, that's gonna affect how much you taxes you pay, you know, all those other things too. Um, but for a simple rule of thumb, we try to basically look at what our actual levy increase is, take off that net new construction number is usually pretty accurate as far as how that offsets the mill rate increase. So that's where, why we're saying, well, it may be the, the, the 9.4, you're gonna actually see about a 6.3. So the average homeowner should expect that the, the city part of their property taxes will go up about 6%? Yep, a little over. And we'll know for sure in October. Um, but yes, that mm -hmm. would be under this proposed what that would be. And if we, I'm not advocating to add more, but I'm just asking. All right, so if we added, so for example, for every 100,000 or something that we added. It's about 1%. This, what's that? It's about 1%. So then the proposed mill rate would go up another 1%. Yep. So about 0.46. Okay, so then 100,000 would take us up to above five. Yep. Okay, thanks. So, sorry, quickly, I know this has been a lot for one night. Uh, so basically, what we're looking at the operations levy increase is 3.6%. I'm trying to remind everybody that includes $367,000 more in shared revenue. So this would be a much, I don't think there's any chance that we could actually implement any sort of salary, new salary system if it wasn't for the new shared revenue. It just, there's no way that'd be feasible whatsoever. Um, so I wanna stress that. Now, the last part of this is the library levy, of course. And I know we, we're gonna need more, way more time to talk about this at future meetings, but um, so the library levy, um, you see how I propose breaking that out. Basically, we get it, we have to levy additional $380,000. We have a one chance to do that. Either we levy it now or we forever lose that limit. The state has been very clear about that. So what I have proposed, and this is just my proposal for now, the council obviously in the finance committee needs to discuss this, is basically funding the library at what the library has requested. So my breakdown of how that how we get there is in that email I sent, but basically um, we know from the county for sure that the partners last year paid $380,000 towards the library. Next year, they're gonna pay 506,000. So they're gonna pay significantly more under this we system. don't. We don't know that for sure. We do. Cause... It's locked in. It's based on last year's to this year's. Okay, thank you. So, so and the they already has... know the expenses of the whole. They rate. use last year's. Okay. So they use last year's numbers right. to know what we get this year. So the county has already assured us that we will get five hundred six thousand two hundred seven dollars from the yeah. from the partners. So the partners, while they may not be levying that money anymore, their taxpayers are going to see a significant increase in what they pay towards the library, even though for it'll their show county up on the tax. Yes, it'll show up on the county side, but it'll be levied against mm -hmm. those former partners. So we'll get that 506,000 from the partners. Our full levy, when we add what we levied last year, plus that new 380,000 um, from the capacity that we gained from the partners is at 745. Um, that gets us basically to 1.25 million total for library funding. Now, what the library requested for funding was basically 1.1 million. So how do we get then, how do we balance those two out so we can still keep that levy capacity? Well, we also have to take into effect, into account that we always charge back to the library, building use fees, admin fees, things like that. So I propose just the same, a number that would get them to their full funding, the 132, 130. Um, now, with their full funding from this, what this does mean, if you looked at the library's request, is that they often use up to $200,000 a year in donations for their operating. Um, so they're seeing a fairly significant increase in their true funding, like not worrying about donations, not worrying about that, but they know that they're gonna get that money. They're gonna get 
they're going to be fully funded next year with what they're requesting based on this. Um, and so when we talk about the actual library levy, you know, I, I say that it's what we're increasing it by is at 745 one away, but I'm taking off our admin fee. I'm just pulling that off there because we do get that back. We don't have to actually, it doesn't impact our levy, things like that. So what we leave what leaves us with is a $534,000 basically increase in the library levy, um, uh, which is about 5.4% um, of our 2024 levy increase. I mean, it's a Big piece of it. You said five. I think it's more like 50, isn't it? Well, increase in their funding. I'm talking about our, we, when you talk about a 9.4% levy increase. Half of it 4 came from the library. 4% is debt. Five, let's just say for our numbers, five and a half, five point, five and a half percent is operations. Of that five and a half, at least about half of that. Is, so half is of the, our increase is the library. in taxes is yep. to go to the library. Yes. And I have a, quite a bit that I'd like to discuss about that levy, but I didn't I want to interrupt you, so I apologize. Do we have, uh, before you go there, and this is just kind of an aside, but can, do we have a breakdown by municipality of that 500 and some thousand dollars? No, I'll get that from I'll get that from And a comparison of what they were paying. And the reason I did bring that up is, if I'm not mistaken, with there's, okay, it's set for 2024, but we don't know what the library will receive. That is an uncertain number for them in the future. Future, that number could fluctuate. It could go up, it could go down, depending yep. on how many rural circulations and oh, also circulation. what the rate is that the county determines. So, so much of that is we're tied up with count what the county is doing. Yep. Um, and I, I do, is this an opportunity for me to speak about, I feel that we need to have a serious and in-depth discussion about whether we accept that levy, take that levy capacity, because uh, the idea of transferring a service to us, actually those former partners, or soon to be former partners, are transferring their service to the county. The county is who's levying them and taking that money. I know that the state has, so you've spoken many times to the state, Aaron and I have spoken about this separately, and he's assured me that you have written documents. I would like to see that <laughs> written assurance that the State Department of Revenue has assured us that Hudson, unique as we are, can transfer that because basically uh, that's what those taxpayers were paying towards our joint library. And they are, as you mentioned, going to be continuing to contribute to libraries. That's, they pay into the county system and the money that we get or the Hudson Area Library gets will depend on the circulations that are used there. And that'll be a very important uh, endeavor for our library staff to continue to increase those circulations. I do wanna point out that because of issue, you, you use some terminology in your letter to us about uh, in order to be exempt, and I think we should discuss about what that means, that we have to levy a certain amount so that we're, we don't come under requirements that the county sets for us. So this could be for another time. But I, right now, as I understand it, the minimum that we need to levy for <coughs> to avoid that exemption or that possible penalty where the county steps in and says, hey, you're not funding adequately would be 614,671 roughly. Right. So last year we levied our residents, city of Hudson taxpayers $365,000. And so increasing it to 614,000 alone is almost 60% increase. So we are definitely increasing what the city of Hudson is paying towards the library. So in case anyone is asking or raising that concern and you know, boy, we need to support the library. We are, our city, our residents. That was one of the reasons that uh, the joint library was originally formed 20 years ago was so that um, some of the dollars that went into the county system could stay here in the Hudson area library. And uh, times have changed. Uh, that partnership is no longer standing, but I just want to make sure that everyone knows that if we're thinking, oh, we need to spend more on the library, our residents are going to pay, spend about 60% more in their taxes on the library going forward. No, I agree that we need to have that discussion, but I think that a, a major part of that discussion should be the proposed budget that the library board has come up with so that we and all the details on that, because we already know that the li a lot of the library employees are very much underpaid, and we need to um, encourage the, the library board to be able to have 
salaries that will attract and retain good people, uh, things like that. So, yes, we need to discuss this, but we need to have a, a detailed budget, uh, detailed budget information available so that we can talk about that. Well, I appreciate your sentiment, Joyce, and definitely, as we spoke tonight, spent quite a bit of time talking about city employees and that we value them, and certainly that goes yes. to the library yeah. staff as well. I, I hope that they feel valued by the residents and the patrons. The issue for us, though, is I don't know if we can even require them to share their budget with us. We have no say over the library budget. We fun, help fund it. Yes. But the library trustees, board of trustees, I'm looking to the mayor because he's on that board, uh, determines how it's spent. We don't get to weigh in on that. No, we don't, but we can, uh, we can but, ask for information. You can, you can for look information. at it and ask the questions. It's pub public information, obviously. So. And, sure, and make decisions right. based on what, what I, the information they give us. Uh, more, more discussion is good. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. Anybody else? Anything? So I would say, obviously, you'll be in the next future multiple <laughs> finance agendas to discuss and, and try to get to a certain point. I know this was a lot for the first night. I told the mayor we should probably start at five, I guess. Um, <laughs> but um, it'll be a continued discussion until the finance committee feels comfortable with some sort of recommendation to the council. Okay. So, okay. Everybody thank good on work. this? Yeah, yeah, thank you for your work on it. Yeah. Uh, approve the purchase of two traffic data collectors in the amount of $6,630. Mike? Good evening, Finance Committee. Michael Mraz, Director of Public Works. I'll make this quick. I know we're up against the clock here. So the next two items uh, for the Finance Committee to um, approve is, uh, I know that the Public Safety Committee and Public Works Committee have been dealing with uh, traffic speeding issues throughout the community. And uh, staff has identified a couple of, um, you know, pieces of equipment that will help us uh, maybe collect more data and help us better um, correct those issues throughout the community. So for the first one, it's uh, some data collectors. So we currently we only have the one kind of black tube that goes across the road. This one would be additional two data collectors that are that are remote wireless that could be mounted pretty much anywhere in the community, easy to install, collects data, and then from that data we can uh, pursue options to decrease that speed. So the quote from TAPCO for two of them was $6,630 and we, we look look to you as um, American Rescue Plan Act funds for this purchase. Move to approval. Second. Got a motion second to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Approve the purchase of speed display signage in the amount of $10,693.75. So these are the digital speed signs that you see throughout the community. Uh, this piggybacks on a recent purchase that the PD made for a similar um, software. It actually is from the same company, so we're able to use their software and database. Um, it's a digital speed sign. It also acts as a data collector as well. So uh, the data is collected and stored to the cloud. And again, we can use that data to further increase traffic control uh, along those corridors. One is a temporary which can be put out um, you know, as the data shows from the previous purchase. Um, the other one is semi-permanent, solar powered, um, and based on some of the data that we collect, we would have a unit to deploy um, at a moment's notice, so. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion's approved. Discussion possible action to purchase a 2023 Ford F450 from Osseo Ford in the amount of $84,323.50. So this was a capital purchase that was identified in the 2023 uh, CIP. It is to replace a 2001 Dodge unit that we have. So looking at going on 23 years old and city staff did uh, try to connect with local Ford dealerships, including Hudson Ford, flagship Ford out of Baldwin, Ellsworth Ford. All three of those did not have a unit in stock. And so um, we did kind of reach out to Osseo Ford and they actually have one on the lot and ready to go. Um, in the issue sheet, you can see if we were to go through Hudson Ford, um, between the truck price and outfit price, we're around 118,000, where we can go to Osseo Ford and get one for 84,000, which is you know approximately $40,000 under what Osseo Ford would be able to offer and it falls within our budget. So uh, staff is recommending approval of the, the truck unit from Osseo Ford. So does, so it already has the dump truck option in there? Yep. And it's all, okay, so oh. the picture that's the part white. of report attachment number 2.7, that's, that's the actual one that we'd be buying? That's the unit that's available okay. right now. Move to approve. 
Second. Motion second to approve discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank Thanks, Mike. Uh, I don't have anything. Anybody? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. We stand adjourned. Take just a couple minutes, the uh, council meeting will start. <laughs>